I would imagine that they probably thought that he was going to return within their lifetime, but he still hasn't returned. It's been 2,000 years. It's been over 2,000 years, and he hasn't returned. And so, you know, and Peter says that a day is as a thousand years to God, and a thousand years are as a day. Um, I don't know that that matters a whole lot as far as this, other than just to say that God's timeless. But to me, as a human being, the point is that we just have to be patient and know that God is going to keep his promises in his own time. And seeing the lessons that we learned from Abraham, that's one of the most valuable lessons that you'll get from learning about Abraham's life is about waiting and trusting God to keep his promises. And that will be so evident when you see it on a timeline. Another thing is that if you're doing things like timelines and maps, they serve to help you look more closely at the passage. You know, you read that passage and you think that you're looking at it closely, but you still miss a lot of the details. Like I noticed for the first time, maybe I noticed this before, but I've forgotten. But to me right now, it was the first time that the Bible said that that second altar was not at Bethel. I thought it was at Bethel. It's between Bethel and Ai. In fact, I think that in the other teachings, I've been saying that it's at Bethel. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it could. And when you start thinking about it and you realize the history that happens at Bethel and the history that happens at Ai, it actually is kind of significant that the altar is between the two of them. And so doing these things that makes you look at it more, that might not really have to do with the timeline. It has more to do with the map, actually. And I kind of wondered when I saw that on the map why it wasn't right at Bethel. Um, so that kind of got me thinking and wondering about it. And then doing the timeline made me look at it more closely. But just that you, the fact that you're doing this academic exercise helps you to see these other truths that at first might seem like, eh, that's not very important. But as you start studying God's word more and more and more, you'll realize that it is significant that it's between these two places. And I haven't really had time to think about too much about the significance. I can think of a few things off the top of my head, but I want to have more time to think about it before I really say anything. Um, so anyway, just things like that. It's just really helpful to have these kinds of tools. And it's, it's also interesting. And so, you know, if, if it makes it more interesting to you or to somebody else who looks at your journal a hundred years from now, um, then that's even better because anytime that you can make the study of the Bible more interesting, uh, it's going to affect your life more. So anyway, I hope that that was all clear to you. I hope that you could understand it and that you can do it. I would recommend watching this, watch one step, pause it, do it, watch another step, pause it, do it. That's what I would recommend. That's what I do when I watch uh, tutorials to learn how to do different things. Um, so that's what I would suggest. And also remember, yours might not be 0.32 inches for a year. You need to measure your, uh, let me write this out for you. You need to measure your timeline and, um, and you know, and in this case, it's 100 years. So that makes it a whole lot easier. But you're gonna take the length of your timeline so I'm going to say length, how do you spell length? Okay, length divided by 100 because we're doing 100 years, okay? If you want to make your timeline include uh, Tara's, ter yeah, Tara taking his family out of Ur, then you would make it 125, okay? And you can do that if you want to, that's fine. Okay, so that's your formula. For those of you who hate math, I hope that you can understand this. And again, if you have any questions, please, please, please do ask them. And I'm happy to make another video answering those questions if it's needed. All right, I love you all. I will talk to you later. Next time, it'll be face-to-face, -face, okay? Um, and probably from now on, it'll be face-to-face. -face. Actually, I might have a few more that are either on my computer or here at my desk because I'll wanna show you how to use some tools. But most of them will be face-to-face. -face. I know most of you prefer that. All right, I love you all. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.